Hello, Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. York and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Thursday, May 12th, 2022. Here are the readings for today. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. In those days an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road, and he rose and he went. Behold, an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a minister of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of all her treasure, came to Jerusalem to worship and was returning. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go up and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him, and he heard him reading Isaiah the prophet, and he asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture which he was reading was, As a sheep led to the slaughter, or a lamb before its shearer is dumb, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him, who can declare his generation, for his life was taken up from the world. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, pray, does the prophet say this? About himself, or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news of Jesus. And as they went along the road, they came to some water, And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught up Philip. And the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way, rejoicing. And today's gospel is from the gospel of St. John, chapter 6, verse 40 through 44. The Lord said to the Jews who believed in him, This is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, because he had said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So today I think we'll take a look quickly at the reading of the Acts of the Apostles. There's one particularly important thing there. How can I, says the eunuch, unless someone guides me? How to understand the scriptures? The scriptures, once again, are the church's book. And I know that sounds so contrary to the teachings of American culture. People say the Bible belongs to the people. And if the Bible then is in every house and everyone should read the Bible and everyone should believe the Bible and read it for themselves and not have the church dictate the terms of what's there. And there's a lot of truth to that. The people should be able to read the scriptures on their own. But to be perfectly honest, how can you read most of the scriptures on your own? I'll be honest, it leads to a lot of fractures. Why? Because two different groups can interpret the same kind of scripture in two different ways. And that does lead to trouble. I think the best way to read the scriptures is to read it in conjunction with the church's liturgical services. And in addition to that, with an eye towards how the Bible has been interpreted in the past by the luminaries that have come before us. And by that I do not mean someone that was born in the 1500s, but rather someone that was born in the 300s, and in the 400s, and the 500s, and maybe even earlier than that. The Orthodox Church is a long tapestry, unbroken, throughout all of its history. It's had moments of intellectual stagnation because of outside pressures. It's had its moment of great theological benefit because it was in a position of relative peace. But the church is the place where meaning is derived. Now, for those of you who are not Orthodox that are watching this video, I strongly advise even you to take a look at the Bible studies that are offered in your own churches. I would prefer, of course, for you to go and hear a Bible study in the Orthodox context, but it is far better to read the scriptures in communion, 
than it is to read it as oneself. The individual reading of scripture leads to the fracturing of the denominations that we are seeing today. Certain sections take this particular passage as the absolute truth and everything else is subordinate to it. And then this other faction sees some other passage of scripture where they say that's the core of everything and then they put everything else in subordination to that. The church has a very different way of looking at those things. As I've said before, the Bible serves the church to help guide the church, but the Bible is not the beginning of the church. The Bible is not the cookbook of the church. Instead, it is the thing that helps us understand our relationship to God and how we can perceive God acting in our own day and age. And so when the eunuch today asks that question, he immediately is taught by Philip insofar as is necessary for him to see the scriptures opened before his eyes. And then he is baptized at that very moment. One other passage I think of when we talk about the Bible and interpretation and understanding things would be the experience that Luke and Cleopas had with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. They did not recognize him. They did not see him until he broke the bread in their presence. And when they saw that, then they knew who he was. Then they knew the scriptures. Then they knew that they were worshiping the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. So these are things for us to ponder. And these are things for us to try to comprehend. That the scriptures themselves, as valuable as they are, should be read in communion with other people to help guide and narrate the understanding that is derived from the scriptures. To do so on, as oneself, as one's own interpreter, is to risk, well, more fractures. Unfortunately, that is what happens with such great texts as this. So Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. And may he bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me today. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.